We hold these truths to be self-evident. That all men are created equal. Endowed by their creator. With certain unalienable rights. That among these are life, liberty, liberty and the pursuit of happiness. happiness. You know, Dr. Alfie, when you were talking about, you know, making sure that there's inclusion everywhere, why do you all think the term Black Lives Matter is so triggering? Um, because, you know, every time we scream Black Lives Matter or Black Women Matter, you know, there are always a couple of people that say, well, all lives matter. Or, you know, that's that's not what we're, everybody, every matters. And, you know, obviously that's not what we're saying. We're saying that, you know, all lives can't matter until Black lives do propose the question to everybody, um, a part of the panel, why do you think that that is so triggering for some people? If you look at the All Lives Matter movement, there's no real message. Like, ask anyone who says All Lives Matter and who's like preaching All Lives Matter, be like, what are you fighting for? They, they won't have anything to tell you um, because literally it's not a movement. It's not real. It was created to pretty much invalidate the Black Lives Matter movement and kind of undermine lives mattering. Um, and so really when people say all lives, then it's just a nicer way to say I'm racist and I hate Black people and I don't think Black Lives Matter. Like, period. Let's just be honest. Um, comfortable with Black people that you feel the need to um, say something that goes against that statement then you are anti-Black and you're racist, period. Um, doing is, like you said, realizing all lives can't matter until Black lives matter. I think everyone kind of knows that and everyone has that bottom line. No one's, um, the thing is people are just so bent on making sure that there is no actual fundamental uh, thing of Black lives. Even for me as a Black person, I get uncomfortable sometimes with saying the word black. I often say black and brown, people of color, uh, BIPOC, when at the end of the day, sometimes you have to allow space for black people to be black or for black people to exist independently. Um, and so we've made it so uncomfortable to even just say the word black. You have like even people saying African-American, not every black person's African-American. So, I mean, yeah, just blackness has always been something uncomfortable for everyone. Um, and the All Lives Matter movement is just about maintaining that uncomfort and um, maintaining that like weird taboo-ness about talking about blackness. I was gonna say, uh, that was a really incredible point. I was gonna say, um, to answer the question, to just add on to that, uh, I think there are a lot of reasons, but I think uh, one of the reasons has to do with how most white people, but really white people in general, are educated on what um, blackness is in this country and what it has been. And a lot of that has to do with the educational system, uh, the racist educational system, and how they present um, uh, our different struggles, like the civil rights movement and, and slavery. Uh, they romanticize the civil rights movement to the point of they present it like it's a three-day carnival event. Where Rosa, pa where Rosa Parks refused to give up her seat on the bus, and then Martin Luther King Jr. gave the yeah, I Have a Dream speech, and then day three racism is over, and uh, <laughs> you know we sing Kumbaya on the streets, and we shall overcome, going to the promised land. <laughs> um, but the nuances of race in this country are a lot deeper than just a decade of us fighting for uh, civil rights. I was watching I Am Not Your Negro. Um, I uh, suggest everybody watch that documentary. It's so informative and it's such a beautiful documentary. But one of the things that they talked about in there was uh, the quote unquote uh, American lie, this romanticism of, um, uh, um, of America um, and this uh, liberty and justice for all. And I think that has to do with the way that people analyze Black Lives Matter. Like a lot of white people owe their identity to this American lie. And when we say Black Lives Matter, we are literally saying that the America that you know, that you have been taught um, to believe is for all and, it, and to believe works for everybody, does not. And this entire institution and this entire uh, complex societal structure um, works for you at the expense of every other race that there is. Um, and so they hate to hear that because they're saying, 
uh, because they're hearing um, that their entire existence and everything that they've been taught uh, is a lie and is not true um, and has worked for them, like I said, at the expense of everybody else. So I think that has a lot to do with why it's so triggering for them is because we are basically exposing the, uh, the evils of the society in which they owe their entire identity to. Um, without racism, they would not be able to prosper in the way that they do in this very biased system. Um, yeah, I think everyone's kind of got my brain firing right now, which is really cool. Um, just kind of what I'm hearing from the rest of you is that like this is a big moment for education and a big moment for learning. And I definitely feel that myself, but I feel like in order to learn, you have to be willing, which is so, so um, taxing on me to have these conversations with people who aren't ready to have them or who aren't willing to have them. And I think a lot of people that can resonate with you, but um, I think a lot of being a white person in America has been being centered at that kind of, oh, everything's liberty and justice for all um, because you know of what you were talking about, um, the romanticism of you know our patriotic ideals. But I think one of the things that hit me so hard um, the quote that hit me the hardest was that James Baldwin quote. I'm going to paraphrase it because I'm terrible with memory. Um, but it was the flag you pledge allegiance to doesn't pledge allegiance to you, that quote that um, I'm not sure how many of y'all are familiar with. But um, that quote kind of hit me because I was like, oh, I've been saying the pledge since I was a tiny child and saying that, you know, this country is liberty and justice for all. And that doesn't um, ring true for the people who are literally next to me, living around me, you know, people that I know. And I think having that humility to say, I did while not being aware of how it was affecting other people, and I am taking ownership of my part in this is really a lot harder than most people make it out to be, but it's so worth it. It's so worth it to be able to say I was wrong and to move forward and to move in the direction of being educated and being part of something better than what we're coming from. Um, so yeah, I, I think also as a college student, I'm like, I'm learning so many things that I was never taught in, you know, classic elementary school, classic high school, like just learning about environmental racism, like anything about that till I came to college. Learning about, um, you know, Native American studies was a class that I had to seek out, you know, just learning about different communities of color and learning about histories that I wasn't informed about is so enlightening to how our education system is broken and how it's like kind of you know, silencing so many people, but also keeping so many people in the dark who could be very, very helpful in this movement. So education seems like the best way out for me, but obviously there's so many avenues. Yeah, um, I mean, that's incredibly powerful. And it's honestly so comforting of the fact that, you know, you get it. At the end of the day, we are just asking people to get it and, and you get it. And I also wanna bring in the thing, you know, know necessarily know if it's been if it's only me but I feel so especially in the past like two to three weeks I feel like I've learned more about my history and my culture via social media um than I have in I'm about to be a senior now than I have ever since you know kindergarten and so there's just something that you know we were talking about the social media conversation how you know social media has a negative depiction and you know everybody says oh social media is this and social media is that but I think right now this is how we push these movement forward push this movement forward and this is how we continue to educate ourselves and our peers on that what this country was actually built on and why we're screaming, why, you know, why we're protesting, why we're saying, you know, we want equality and justice for all. Um, and Jade, you posted on your Instagram story about Black and how, you know, you wish that you learned more about just Black women and Black culture. Can you, you know, touch on that? Yeah, it's, it really says something about the education system and the current climate that one has to dig very deeply to find these stories to, to find and that's it's shocking and, and horrible because it's the fabric of our country and our society is built off of black women and um, and I think this is a really great time to um, the part of stepping up and taking action is to dive into that and to find that and um, 
and to educate ourselves. I mean, it's it's a beautiful thing to 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 get enlightened and to to look into these stories because this generation, this next generation, has so much power to change the system and to create this American dream that has never existed. And um, and that goes with education and learning and admitting when one's wrong. American history actually is and not what is taught in the school system because it's it's flawed and it's biased um so i've been definitely leaning into the education aspect of all of this and learning about it and um seeking a, a bit of solace and comfort in knowing that that social media is, is a platform and ability to find this information these information that we lost growing up in school. Something that's important to what you said was um, the idea that white people can have black heroes, right? Like for forever, black people have had white heroes because that's the only people that were portrayed to us. Um, and I think that, you know, back to that, why, why is Black Lives Matter so difficult for people to conceptualize? You look at the history, white people strip their own identity. And that is something to acknowledge. You came in, you were Irish, you were, you were, you know, from London, you were, I don't know, Swedish. This was, these were all the identities. White people said, we have to create a system of superiority. We're going to group it like this. So white people have spent their entire lives being stripped of an identity or, or trying or, or stripped their own identity and other and the rest of everybody else's. And then black people have spent, we've spent our entire lives trying to protect and create ours. So white people, this can be a part of your story. This is your story. White people can, can, can be just as, as excited about finding the heroes and just as excited and, and connected because it's, it's your history too because white people can have black heroes. Yeah, absolutely. Um... You help us, we help them, compassion. It's ingrained in love That's the answer For the answer To the opposite direction of the cause Black bodies They don't care You see me Unaware Of what's on my mind Black bodies Oh, I need you to see Got some good change in my heart. That's where change gotta start. That's where change gotta start.